By the end of today's video, you're gonna have a complete understanding of how to start leveraging Claude AI artifacts. With this new feature, we can do really cool stuff. With a chat interface here, we can get outputs such as a landing page that is interactive. Furthermore, we can actually download this code as well. We can also create video games with these artifacts and a ton of other stuff. So by the end of this video, you'll know everything you can do with this new feature released by Claude. Welcome back, y'all. Let's go ahead and learn everything we can do with this feature. This is really cool stuff. Now, I've already done a video on this, or two videos on this, or actually three. One was showing you how to create a landing page with it. One was showing you how to create a game with it. And then the other one was kind of comparing the chat GBT outputs and the Claude outputs. In this video, we're just gonna have an understanding of the full capabilities of this new feature. And I assume long-term, there'll be even more capabilities for this feature, but let's go and jump in. Let's go ahead and see how we even enable it. So we're gonna come over here. We're gonna go ahead and click this and hit feature preview. Make sure it is on. Furthermore, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link down to Claude AI in the description down below. Just click it. You can go ahead and sign up if you don't have an account yet. To use this feature, it is, drum roll please. It's actually free. And I wasn't aware of that at first. I was told that by a comment in one of my past videos. So guess what? You can do everything I'm about to show you in today's video for free. Super cool. Let's go ahead and start with a simple prompt here. Get comfortable with the user interface and how to interact with this feature. I'm going to simply put, make me an 8-bit drawing of a cat. Yes, a cat this time. I know last time I did a dog and a llama, but we're doing a cat. So what you'll notice is that right off the bat, it's going to split it open, right? So we got our chat here and we got the output of what we're looking to do here. What you'll also notice is that it is an amazing artist or kind of amazing artist. To get comfortable with this user interface, all you need to know is that this is where we're going to talk to Claude and this is how our outputs are going to look. I'm going to go ahead and shrink down. So for example, just real quick, let's make the cat orange. Make this cat orange. This is the beauty of AI, y'all. You can speak in layman terms you do really cool stuff, really complex stuff, like code. So now we got an orange cat, Cat in the Hat. That was a really good movie. I don't know what year that came out, but that was a really funny movie, like the OG Cat in the Hat. Perfect. Now that we understand that this is how we chat with it, let's understand how we actually start editing and playing around with the artifact itself. Corbin, why do they call them artifacts? I have no clue. Maybe someone in the comments will know. So one thing we can do is that if you're doing a code-based artifact, we can actually click code here and see all the relevant code. Don't worry, not every single thing we can do with artifacts is purely code-based. There's a ton of other stuff I'm gonna show you in today's video of other things we can do with this. Now to copy the code, we can go ahead and hit this copy clipboard. Furthermore, we can actually download the file. And what's cool is the actual downloadable file itself is a SVG. So we can use it elsewhere in our workflow. And this is a big cat. Now within the same chat, we can actually create multiple types of artifacts. So let's go ahead and create another artifact. We're gonna go ahead and say, design a simple HTML landing page for a coffee shop. And this cat is the mascot. What you're gonna notice here is that these are actually going to work with each other. They're gonna kinda have an artifact here, an artifact there, and combine. This will make more sense, generating code. So here is our output here. We got the original cat artifact that we created together, and now we have it integrated into a landing page. To see both of these artifacts separate, we can simply click this arrow here, and you'll notice is that they're already labeled for us. Zooming in a little bit so we can see it better, you will see that the cat we drew together is the 8-bit style drawing, and then the coffee shop landing page is right here as well. Now, well, here's what's super cool. We actually have the version level as well. So for example, we went from, I actually don't remember the original cat color, <laughs> to an orange cat, and then we obviously have one version of our current landing page. There we go. So now you got a basic idea of what artifacts are, how it works, and how it interacts. Let's go ahead and check out some other features here that is pretty advantageous in this context. And as I said before, if you want to make a whole landing page when it comes to this, make sure to watch this at the end, but check out that video right there. So how do we optimize this and how do we leverage this feature to its max capability? We're going to go to projects here. When we're in projects, what this allows us to do is really organize our chats and more importantly, organize our artifacts and their use cases. So right now we're going to do two things. We're gonna check out the example project it shows us and we're gonna create a project together and get the full idea of what we can do. Let's check out this project. Now this is a pretty simple project. The purpose of this project is to learn how to use Claude. But lucky for you, you're learning how to use Claude through me. So we don't need this project. I'm gonna delete it now, okay, but <laughs> basically we learned a couple things from this example project. First thing we learn, we can add context here. So what this does is we can add spreadsheets, PDFs, documents, so that when we chat with our Claude here, it's gonna be more you know, trained on that data. So I'm gonna go and click this and give you an example here. So what you'll notice is that my face is in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom down. But what you'll notice is that these are just, you know, good ways of prompting. And for me to prove to you that this can actually reference this file, I'm gonna simply ask, give me a general tip for effective prompting. Prompting. And one of the tips that it should give should be found in this file. Let's hit enter. Let's go ahead and take this first example here and see if it shows up in that file. Come in over here, click in here, and there we go. Be clear and specific. Clearly state your task or questions at the beginning of your message. Be clear and specific. State your task or question clear at the beginning 
of your message. Same deal, same go. Now you know if you add a file here, it will actually reference it. That's a good thing because you don't want to feel like you add a whole spreadsheet. It's like 30 pages long and it's not referencing it. You're just like, this, is, this was a waste of time. Don't worry, it actually will look at the data. Now let's go ahead and create a project together and really understand why we create projects. So I'm gonna create a project here. So as a quick memo here from Claude themselves, projects help you organize your work and leverage knowledge across multiple conversations. This is important as right now, other chatbots like ChatGBT, you don't really have the ability to create what I would like to call these as folders. So for example, let's just call this Claude tutorial and then we're gonna do some chats here to show you the full capabilities of these artifacts. So we'll do Claude tutorial and add a little description and be like, Fun video. I hope this was a fun video. Are right, some of y'all asleep right now? Wake up. <laughs> okay. This is where you can add the PDFs. Simply drag it in there. Now, what is super cool here is we can also add custom instructions. Now, if you know me, I love custom instructions. I'm actually going to leave a video here that I show you how to create custom instructions with ChatGBT, but that same logic that I show here, show there, can be applied here. On top of that, I actually give you access to a free GBT in that that allows you to create your own custom instructions, but have AI make them for you. So you don't have to actually laser it perfectly. But just to tell you what custom instructions does, basically gives it context of how to respond to your answers more effectively. So just to give you a very, very simple example, I could just simply say at the beginning of each message, say, good morning. Corbin, that seems dumb. That doesn't seem like, like who cares? Why would I need it? This is good depending on your use case. For me personally, when I code with a AI model like this, what I'll do is I'll tell it the software that I'm using. I'm using VS Code on Mac OS. I'm coding in Python. I'm coding in the React J6. Like that's where it's important. You want to give all this prerequisite stuff that can get very annoying when you're trying to achieve an output. But just to prove this, I'm going to say hello. And this should say good morning to me. Hello, Claude. Good morning. So now that we've created that chat, you'll notice it's right above me which means that now we've created almost like a folder for chats. Coming over to this article, which is pretty awesome when it comes to helping you out with artifacts, and I'll leave it in the description down below. Let me just go ahead and fire off some of the capabilities here, and then we're going to do them together as well. Right off the bat, code snippets. You can do programming languages, Python, JavaScript, Java, C++, like whatever floats your boat. We can do documents. We can mark down files, plain text documents. We can do websites. And we're looking at simple type of websites. And one thing I want to point out as well when it comes to coding and what I've been told by the community, people that have been reaching out to me, basically tell me that the coding feature is cool, but it does have its limitations. I mean, you can't really code out. You're not going to be able to create Facebook, y'all. I'm sorry. You're not going to be able to recreate Facebook. There's limitations to how much code it can output, but it is a great starting foot, like anything, to give you a direction on how to code out a feature. You can also create SVGs that you saw together with that 8-bit cat. We can also do mermaid diagrams, React components, data visualizations, mathematical equations and formulas, algorithms, and project structures. Let's try a couple of these. We shall begin with our first question here. Create a Python function that calculates the Fibonacci sequence. And there we go. We got our Python function, chat on the left, code on the right, and we created ourselves a little artifact here that we can reference later on. Another question, we shall go create a mermaid sequence diagram for a user authentication process. Boom. Notice how it is referencing good morning to me, but also look how cool this is. Like this is extremely cool. So we got the entire authentication process here right there to go. We can download it. We can copy it. We can even share it. To share, we would go into the Teams plan with Claude. I should probably make a video on that. Let me know if you want me to make a video on that. That allows you to kind of like communicate and work hand on hand with other people on the same artifact. Now, what you'll also notice is a new little button here, which allows us to actually add the artifact to our project. So if I click that and then I come back to our project, like in the little homepage here, it's saved to the side, but it also has like a knowledge cap, e.g. the amount of knowledge that Claude can look at for context when giving an answer or a better term for knowledge maybe in this context is data. Now, there's a lot more we can do with artifacts, but this tutorial gives you a general overview of how to approach them. Now, here's the best part. Don't worry, they're free. So you can go ahead and start actually leveraging this kind of tech free of charge, which is kind of insane if you think about it. Like this is like a huge amount of value for free. To be fair, they're probably trying to soak up a lot of the market right now because there's high competition when it comes to all these AI models that are releasing. Now, if you want to see other use cases that I personally did with these artifacts, I created a video game and I created a landing page. You can go and check out my channel here. They're like the last two videos I did and I'll see you in the next video. These are two random videos that are based off the way you've been engaging with YouTube. So do you like these videos? Do you not? If you don't like them, then YouTube's algo is messing up again. And I'll see you in the next video.